Hey, it's your friend CG here, and I am bringing you my replay for my Week 2 match of the UPC versus Fallop, coach of the Doofer Drapions. Now, I am doing a post come on this because the actual battle ended up being like 40 minutes or so, and um, there was a lot of space between turns. We were both thinking really hard about our plays. Uh, this match was really intense. Every single turn mattered. Every single decision mattered. Um, so there was basically... <laughs> It's a long battle with not a lot necessarily happening, even though there's a lot of, you know, thoughts and mind games and stuff. So decided that I'd bring a postcom instead because uh, I don't want to put up a 40 minute video on my channel. Uh, that's just uh, what I'm uh, not about that. So anyway, in case you missed my team builder, I do have a uh, Focus Ash lead Excelgore with a uh, Spikes Encore knockoff Final Gambit. I have a Choice Scarf Nidal Queen with a uh, Poison Jab. Uh, Crunch, Thunder Punch, and uh, Stealth Rock. I also have a Choice Scarf Zoroark with a uh, U-Turn, Night Days, Extra Sensory, and uh, Knock Off. I originally had Sludge Bomb, but it's not a uh, legal move with uh, Extra Sensory because uh, Extra Sensory is an egg move and Sludge Bomb is an event move. Uh, so I thought I would go with the Extra Sensory instead because I wanted that for the Como O in case it starts to set up. Um, I've got three attacks, Megalodios. Uh, Psy Shock, Shadow Ball, and Thunderbolt. I have a kind of bulky Manetric with Assault Vest. It's a Volt Switch, Thunderbolt, Overheat, and uh, Signal Beam. And then last but not least, I have an Assault Vest, Tapu Bulu, with uh, Wood Hammer, Horn Leech, Stone Edge, and Nature's Madness. He's brought Manaphy, Sylveon, Metagross, Nidoking, Haunch Crow, and Como O. So, in terms of matchups, you know, in my team builder, I, I, I spoke a lot about how I think I match up really poorly versus Fallop because he has a lot of really great wall breakers, and I just have a really bulky, kind of balanced team. And balanced teams tend to do poorly against Pokemon like Manaphy, like Nidto King. Um, so, when I chose to go more offensive, I was hoping I would see a team kind of like what Fallop has brought. Um, and it's been pretty fortunate as well that he didn't bring anything that was super fast. He didn't bring his Pidgeot, um, which was great. He didn't bring his Raichu, he didn't bring his Ms. Magius. Um, it should suggest that something on his team is Scarfed, um, but uh, it's hard to say what Pokemon that might be because he doesn't have like a natural, like quote-unquote natural Choice Scarf on his team. To me, Pokemon that are like natural for Choice Scarf are ones that have Volt Switch or U-Turn. Um, that's not to say that those are the only viable ones. There's lots of Pokemon that are viable that have Choice Scarf without momentum moves. But just like when you're looking at a team, like that's the ones that those are the ones that catch my eye. And so I'm having a hard time picking um, which one, you know, picking out which one it is. Um, I have good answers for a lot of his team. Manaphy, I have my Tapu Bulu for, um, and uh, you know, my man, my Nido Queen can uh, basically take on his entire team. I wish I had Earthquake um, rather than Crunch because uh, I, I put Crunch on there for the Miss Magius mainly and uh, and also because, you know, dodged Earthquake and things like that. But Earthquake would be here. It would be really nice to hit Nidoking Nido King super effectively, Metagross super effectively, hit neutrally on the uh, Como O, things like that. Um, but anyway, I am just going to go ahead and leave with my Excel Gore because uh, my plan was to get up hazards versus him and uh, try and pressure you know as much as possible using the hazards you know make sure he doesn't want to switch around and things like that and uh, it'll help me get kills with things like Nidoqueen Queen and Zoroark and uh, Latias especially Latias is looking like it has a really good matchup versus his team uh, because it outspeeds everything so yeah if I can support those Pokemon with the hazards I'll be really happy uh, so let's go ahead and uh, hop on into the battle here. So I'm going to lead with this as he leads with his Como O. I'm just going to go ahead and go for a spike. And uh, if he goes for a Dragon Dance or something, I'll try an Encore. Um, he's just going to go for Sash and or go for Flamethrower, break my Sash. Um, I'm not sure what set he is at this point. Uh, any set is going to break my Sash because I have negative Spadef Nature. Because I want to get my Unburden Boost. Uh, if possible, but I wanted to run HP on this thing in order to uh, be able to Oko with Final Gambit on things like Manaphy. Um, but anyway, because he hasn't gone for a setup move, and because I am double speed now, 
Um, there's no reason for me not to go for another spike. If he does decide to DD now, I do have the Encore. And uh, I am going to outspeed. I, I realized in the battle that I probably should have had this thing set to outspeed Como O, like, no matter what. But, uh, like, you know, or sorry, at plus one. Because I, no, I guess if he's max speed jolly, we're not going to outspeed anyway. Um, but yeah, I didn't have enough speed to outspeed a plus one, but I do after the Unburden boost. So I do go for the second layer of spikes, as he does go ahead and Oko me. Now this is kind of a tough play, because I don't have amazing switch-ins here. So I bring out my Hellcat, but this is actually my Zoroark. I'm hoping that I can uh, force him to switch. And uh, I am just going to go for the knockoff because I'm thinking, you know, he hasn't shown any life orb or anything. There's a chance that he's something like choice specs. So I bring in the Zoroark and I just click knockoff because I know that, you know, if it knocks off the item off of this thing or if he knocks, you know, if knocks off something that's incoming, that's going to be useful. Um, so he does switch on out of here and uh, I do go for the knockoff on this incoming Sylveon. And it shows the leftovers, revealing that it is defensive. Makes it easier to switch into, but without Sludge Bomb on the Zoroark, um, I'm going to have a much harder time hitting it uh, very, you know, with super effective damage. I basically only have the Nidoqueen Queen and uh, potentially Bulu to, to hit it with a big hit, but I want to preserve Bulu for the Mana Fee as much as possible, because uh, I don't have any other switch-ins for that. Uh, so anyway, I bring in the Nidoqueen Queen, uh, because I'm thinking he most likely doesn't have Psy Shock if he's rocking Leftovers. It's probably some sort of Wish set. And he goes for the Yawn, which is uh, a nice tech because it's a really hard to play around. Uh, really, really hard. Um, so I don't want my Nidoqueen Queen to go to sleep because it's too too good in order to uh, let that happen. And uh, based on the, the item and the damage that we've seen so far, I'm thinking that it's most likely that he's just going to go for a Wish here. Uh, so rather than letting my Nidoqueen Queen go to sleep, I am just going to uh, swap on out of here. And I'm going to bring in the Manetric. Uh, doesn't take it super well, but you know at least I could Volt Switch out or do something. He makes a good switch on into the Como O. I don't have any other play but to Volt Switch. And I'm going to bring in the Bulu here, hoping he goes for a Dragon move. And uh, he does show the Draco Meteor, which is pretty nice for me. Now, it's very obvious that this uh, thing could be going for some for sort of fire move against me. He's already shown Flamethrower. Um, I am Assault Vest, so I can take a Flamethrower relatively well. Um, but what I'm really worried about is the Poison Jab. You know, he's shown to be primarily, especially offensive so far, but a Poison Jab has the chance to do a lot of damage versus me. And uh, it might not Oko me, but it'll put me in a position where I'm pretty worthless versus the Mana Fee. So I figure I can take a Poison Jab or a Flamethrower uh, with the, if the, with Latias, if he's, uh, you know, some sort of expert belt set or something like that. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and scout for, and I can threaten him with the Psy Shock right afterwards. So after we heal him up a little bit with the Grassy Terrain, we are going to switch into our Latias. And he actually goes for the Z-Move Inferno Overdrive. Um, so even with our Assault Vest, he probably would have Oko'd us. Uh, I don't know, I haven't done that calc. Um, I'll... I don't know, I'll put something down in the comments or something on how much damage it would have done. In any case, it would have been a disaster uh, had that happened. Uh, so I'm not going to mess around with this thing. The Honchcrow could come in and potentially go for uh, like a Pursuit or something on our on our Psy Shock. But uh, I'm more worried about what's in front of me at the moment. So after he gets healed again, which is kind of crappy... Um, he's going to bring in the Sylveon, and uh, we go for a Psy Shock, and uh, it is actually going to 2 at KO. He's going to get some Grassy Terrain, uh, which puts him out of range of the 2 at KO from the Thunderbolt, as you can see here, and he goes for Wish. So this is really stinky, because he can now just protect and uh, go back up to a good amount of HP, and there's no way that I can punish that. Um, I can try and switch into something else. Like, Nidoqueen obviously can do good damage, uh, but I, he has good switch-ins for moves like Poison Jab, uh, being the Metagross. And, um, you know, he can bring in Mana Fee versus me, which could probably take a hit of anything. So it's a, it's a tough position to be in. The Sylveon's proven to be a problem. And in fact, he hasn't used any Pokemon besides Sylveon and Como O at this point, which is not making me feel very good. Uh, it's making me feel re really bad. But uh, yeah, he does go for the Protect. I go for Psy Shock. Uh, I'm not sure what he's going to be trying to go for here. I'm thinking he might just yawn, so I do just go for Psy Shock, 
uh, which does some nice damage. The grassy terrain does expire, so at least he's not healing anymore. But obviously, I'm not going to want to stay in. I go into... Um, it says Tapu Bulu, but this is actually my Zoroark. Uh, I figured he wouldn't be going for the attacking move because he's going to definitely want to wish up. Um, he's going to be expecting me to switch out with my Latias because I am going to be falling asleep if I don't. And Latias is still so good versus the rest of his team. So I bring in the Zoroark, um, thinking that I might fool him. But the thing is, is uh, <laughs> you know, I'm kind of learning the hard way how to deal with Zoroark. Um, Tapu Bulu obviously summons the grassy terrain when it comes in, and there's no grassy terrain here. So it telegraphs the fact that I am Zoroark. Um, he doesn't feel threatened at all. I go for extra sensory, and it does not do enough damage, and he's able to Oko me with a hyper voice. And on top of that, he gets his wish. So he's chilling at a nice 57%. And I've got no way of dealing with this Sylveon. So I'm going to go with Tenido Queen because this obviously threatens it out. Um, depending upon what he goes into, you know, he, you know, he'll go into whatever Pokemon he wants to based on what he's expecting me to attack with. So, like, if he's expecting a Poison Jab, then his natural Pokemon to go into is Metagross. If he's expecting a Earthquake, then he'll go into Honchkrow. Or things like that, or, you know, you know, or uh, like the Sludge Wave and Earth Power. If he's uh, wondering if I'm special or not, uh, I am running physical, but I haven't shown any moves at this point. Um, I'm pretty sure, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, he does switch out. But uh, you know, because I'm not sure what I'm gonna be hitting on the switch in, I just go for the Stealth Rock. And Koma O is a pretty good middle ground play because it's relatively bulky and can take hits. Um, this is a really important play here. I go into my Latias. So the last time he brought in the Como O. I showed that my switch in was Tapu Bulu. Uh, so I figured that he would make a prediction here and go for the fire move uh, on my predicted Tapu Bulu switch in. So I tried to go into Latias instead. Um, but unfortunately, he does go for the Draco, which does Oko me because I have no uh, bulk investment whatsoever. So that really sucks. I get rid of basically my biggest threat to his team. Um, I go into Tapu Bulu because he is now minus two special attack. And I figure there's not a whole lot else uh, that he can do to me. He's shown uh, Flamethrower, Draco. The Inferno Overdrive, based on the damage, suggests that he actually has Fire Blast and that he used Z Fire Blast rather than Z Flamethrower. Um, so it's just a question of what his last move is. My Bulu doesn't really have anything to threaten this immediately. I can go for the combination of like Nature's Madness and Woodhammer and probably kill it. Um, and I do know that... Nature's Madness is going to do decent damage to whatever he wants to bring in next. Uh, so I do go ahead and click Nature's Madness as he switches out into Metagross. Um, which takes some nice damage upon switch in from the rocks. And uh, now he's chilling at 39%. Now here, uh, this, things are starting to look pretty grim, I would say. Um, this is uh, turn 16, but I'm at a 6-3 disadvantage. Um, and I, I told I told Fal this as much. I was like, yeah, this is going to be a really hard game to win. Um, but the next few turns are really pivotal. So I want to save my Bulu if possible, just because Manaphy is still a threat. Um, the Me Meteor Mash is the most obvious play, and I do have a bulky Manetric that could potentially take one. And uh, Manetric's not looking super useful, because he didn't bring the Pidgeot. Um, you know, it'd still be good to get off it hit on Manaphy or Honchkrow, but... I'm just banking on the combination of Tapu Bulu and Nido Queen to prevent me from getting 6 0'd. <laughs> it's pretty much where I'm at at this point. So I do go ahead and uh, switch on out into the Benetric after I once again heal up my opponent with the Grassy Terrain. He gets a crit here, um, which is unfortunate. You know, it's not like that put me into a KO range or anything like that, um, but the extra HP would have been nice. But uh, what are you going to do? Um, you know, in case he's like a non-life orb, uh, haunch crow or something like that. Having a little bit of extra HP would be nice. Because, you know, most life orb variants are going to Oko me anyway. With something like Sucker Punch. But uh, I digress. Um, so, I'm thinking this is a pretty free opportunity to go for the Overheat. Uh, because he doesn't have a great Pokemon to switch into. Uh, Manetric, he could go for... He could go into Manaphy. Like, if he was expecting the overheat, but that's just so risky since I could obviously go for Thunderbolt. Uh, Como O also would have been a pretty good play as well, but he's already seen how well Como O deals with my team. So he's probably not trying to just, you know, throw that away. But uh, we do get off a nice 44%. 
uh, versus the Nidoking. King. I'm just gonna leave this into Sack, and uh, he can easily kill me with any type of uh, ground type move. Um, and I do go for the overheat, and I get really lucky. I get a crit. Um, so we finally get a KO in this game, and we get rid of his Nido King. So that's a huge deal. Um, because without uh, that crit, obviously Manetric would have gone down. I would have had to go into Nido Queen and go probably for Crunch. And uh, then from there, he could have gone into Manaphy and probably started setting up. Uh, so... It's just really unfortunate that I now have my... Or for, unfortunate for him, it's obviously great for us that we have Manetric alive here. And uh, he is going to now take this opportunity to go into his Manaphy. Seems like as good a chance as any for him to start setting up. And uh, he does show the Wakan Berry, which is pretty smart. Um, and I go into my Tapu Bulu as he does click the Tail Glow. Um, but the... Tapu Bulu that I have here is EV'd to live a plus 3 Ice Beam from Manaphy. Um, if, if it's timid, uh, it, it would have had enough investment to live after one Stealth Rock switch in. But uh, obviously there's no rocks here, which is nice. So I then recalced and saw if we would live, if it was modest, and we definitely would live. Uh, so I'm feeling pretty good about our shot here. Um, I already know that he's not Z-Move because one, he burned his Z-Move with Como-O, and two, he showed the Wakan Berry already. So the only thing that could potentially screw me up is Hidden Power Poison, but I don't think there's any good reason for him to run Hidden Power Poison considering that Ice Beam's going to Oko most sets of Tapu Bulu anyway. Um, so I'm expecting to catch him off guard here. He does go for the Ice Beam, and uh, we live that very comfortably as you can see, and we can... Uh, get back up to a good amount of HP with our Horn Leech. Horn Leech did like 111% minimum. Uh, so we were on the brink of losing like five turns ago. And uh, while things are still not looking good, at least we were starting to make a game out of it. Um, he's going to go into his Haunch Crow, which is really scary here. And uh, we both thought really hard about this play. Um, I want to try and conserve my Nido Queen because it can do good damage to basically everything on the team. Um, it can Oko everything with Poison Jab except for the Metagross. Um, Manetric, I was thinking about sacking here. Like basically, the play is go into Manetric, you know, sack it, and then go into Nido Queen, and then try and revenge this Haunch Crow. Um, so it's just a question of what's the less useful Pokemon to me. Is it Manaphy? Or sorry, is it a Manetric or is it Tapu Bulu? Um, I ultimately decided that Tapu Bulu was the less useful because um, because it, it you know it pretty much doesn't deal with anything else on the team that well. It can uh, it can Oko Sylveon, which is nice, but uh, my Nidoqueen Queen can do that, and uh, the Manetric has a chance to after rocks damage because it's at 57 percent now and so it would take 24 percent on switch in leaving it at like 33 percent so it's still not quite enough but yeah and then the manetric can also go for overheat versus the um versus the metagross and so i just thought that it would be the better play to leave in the uh tapu bulu so i do let him take me out with the brave bird here he doesn't show any life orb or anything, which makes me certainly curious about what sort of item he is. Um, he could just be Expert Belt or, or something, or even Choice Band. Uh, but I do go into my Nido Queen here. And uh, so basically, if he just clicks uh, Sucker Punch here and weakens me, then he can bring in his Como O, Revenge Me. And uh, then he basically has the game one from there. My Manetric can't beat, uh, well, can't beat a Sucker Punch from Haunch Crow anyway. Sylveon can probably wish stall on me, get back up to full HP, and then take me out with Hyper Voice. And Metagross, I bet it's Assault Vest, so it can take me out with something like Earthquake or Zen Headbutt or whatever. So uh, I'm expecting that at this point there's no way that we can really win this game. Um, I'm just going to go for Thunder Punch just in case because I don't want to go for Poison Jab in case he switches into Metagross. Um, if he's, if I go for Thunder Punch and he switches into Como O, I think it's pretty much a win for him as well, because then I would have to... I can't kill Como O with Thunder Punch. I have to sack Manetric, try and bring in Nidoqueen again. But then Nidoqueen 
uh, is going to have a hard time getting through uh, Sylveon, Honchkrow, and Metagross. Uh, I'm pretty lucky though in that he has no idea what sort of Nidoqueen set I am. That's all I've done so far this game is go for rocks. Uh, so he's thinking that I'm bulky and that he's not going to be able to take me out with his Brave Bird. And uh, thusly, he uh, actually switches out and uh, goes into the Metagross, which is perfect for me. Uh, because I went for the Thunder Punch, I can 2 KO this thing very easily. I do take it down. And then from here, all I need to do is... Uh, he's, his only play is to go into Como O, because all of his other Pokemon get O-Code by Thunder Punch. Uh, I sack Manetric, bring back in Nidoqueen, and I can spam Poison Jab for the win. Um, it is a roll versus the Como O, so it's not a guaranteed kill. Uh, but it is in my favor, so somehow we went from being on the verge of being 6 0'd to having a, a reasonable shot of winning this game. Um, so he does bring in the Como O, like I said. I am just going to switch into the Manetric. Um, he is going to end up going for Earthquake. And it doesn't even kill, which is amazing, uh, because now we can get off a Thunderbolt, and now Poison Jab is a 100% kill versus Como O. And as you were going to see, Nidoqueen is just going to come in here. I'm not even going to pause uh, so that way you guys can uh, watch Nidoqueen go through the last of Fallop's team. Uh, so we are going to get one of the closest games uh, I've ever played, uh, and it's going to result in a 1-0 victory in our favor. Um, it definitely, really what it came down to was that crit on the Nidoking, uh, because we were able to keep our Manetric, ended up being a very useful Pokemon, uh, because we could, it, one, it, we were able to save it as a sack versus that Como O, and, uh, get Nidoqueen back in and switch to a different move, uh, which is excellent. Um, but then also just the fact that Manetric was still in the back, he thought that I was Scarfed. And, which makes sense given the way that I was playing it. You know, I, I had never gone for a move, uh, like, more than one move while I had it out. It made sense versus his team, like, as a way to revenge, make a Pidgeot. It was a good way to deal with Manaphy if it was, uh, like, plus one Rain Dance or something like that. Um, so that just kind of changed the way that he thought about the, the match. And then it also turns out that he was Scarf Honchkrow. So that was part of the reason that he ended up switching out versus my Nidoqueen with the Honchkrows, because he was Scarfed. He didn't know what kind of Nidoqueen I was. If I was bulky, there was no way he was going to kill. Um, based on the damage that it did on this last turn, I think a plus one Brave Bird would have O-Code uh, my Nidoqueen. But again, he was worried that I was going to be able to revenge with Manetric uh, on that Honchkrow. So it was just kind of like the perfect storm for me, and uh, it really sucks for Fallop that the game ended this way, because he was, you know, he was dominating for the first half of this of this game, but then the just you know a couple of, of unlucky turns, and uh, you know he just didn't have all the information to make the correct plays there at the end. Uh, if if he had known that I was a Scarf Nido Queen, if he had known that I was in Assault Vest Bulu, like he would have played differently, of course. Um, so it really didn't work out for him, you know, and just the, the hazards really racked up on him, uh, did a lot of damage throughout the course of the game. Uh, so I'm really grateful that I brought a Selgor to, uh, really put on a lot of pressure. And, uh, I'm hoping that we can now use this as to, uh, as kind of a, a stepping stone for the rest of the season, use it to get some momentum, get a couple more wins and uh, really try and take over this division because right now we are, even though we're 1-1, one one, we're still in last place in the division uh, because we, uh, uh, Fallop is 1-1, one one, but he has a better differential than us, and then we lost to Nova Hawk, and, you know, if he, I guess, it, you know, depending upon the result of his battle, we might be ahead of him, but I, I, I doubt it. He has such a good team that it might be hard for him to lose anyway. So yeah, that's going to do it for me, you guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Sorry for uh, the postcom, but I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I, I know it still ended up being kind of long, but at least it wasn't 40 minutes. And it gave a good uh, dive into my thought process. So uh, make sure you check out Fallop. Go make sure you sub to his channel. 
And uh, make sure you check out my channel for all the other gaming and Pokemon content that I have. And until the next time, I will see you all later.